Hello there and welcome friends, this is a guide with everything you need to know about how to build a claw character that dual wields claws for lightning fast attacks, can proc both bleed and frostbite for massive amounts of damage and easily defeat even the ultimate bosses like Melania herself. And for a true Wolverine style claw character, you'll be extremely tanky while also retaining speed and can even regenerate health passively and on hit. As with all of my builds, I'll guide you from the beginning of the game to the end game, with some tips on how to make a very powerful claw character even as early as the start of the game, for nice smooth progression. So without further ado, let us get started, and first with class selection. When it comes to starter class, I know I often say this, but I really like going with Vagabond for most melee characters. Your starting stats are very solid overall, even the mental stats for some spellcasting support through buffs. And as for the keepsake, the golden seed as usual, for the extra flask charge in the beginning of the game. Alright, so now let's talk about the best claws in the game. The best ones in my humble opinion are first, the raptor talons. They actually have a pretty unique effect in that their heavy attack attacks two times per hit. So one heavy attack equals two hits. The charge attack does the same as well. Plus they also have a bonus to jumping attacks. The second best claws to me are the Bloodhound claws. By default, they already come with the super powerful Bloodhound Step Ash of War, which lets you easily dodge enemy attacks, which is probably the fastest of all of the dodges in the game, including faster than the Light Roll. Having access to Bloodhound Step early on is a blessing and makes the game a lot easier. Here's a fun part about claws. While you only get a single one of them, so long as you press Y plus RB, or triangle plus R1, your character will automatically dual wield whatever claw you have equipped. For example, I only have the raptor's talents here. On the other hand, you can also dual wield different claws at the same time. So in this case, raptor's talon plus bloodhound claws by attacking with the normal power stance button, so L1 or LB. So now that we know the best claws, let's talk about how to actually get them early on. The good thing is, both Raptor Stallion and also Bloodhound claws can be acquired pretty much in the same region, the Altus Plateau. As usual, you'll have to go to the Grand Lift of Dectus to actually access the region, something that is pretty easy to do even at the early game. I know I've probably said this many times, so I'll try to keep it simpler for now, but to get there, you'll need both halves of the Dectus Medallion, the first one right here at Fort Height, to the east of the starter area. From Fort Height's entrance, well, it's just a lot of stair climbing, so... <laughs> up the stairs here, then the second set of stairs, past the flask throwing enemies, then rush for the tower right ahead and climb the ladder to the top, where you'll find the left half of the medallion inside the chest. While you're here, I also recommend you fight the Golden Knight, pretty easy to do with guard counters. This way, when you defeat him, you'll get the Blood Slash Ash of War, which will come in handy when it comes to acquiring one of our claws, so just equip it on your starter sword if you want. The other half is at Fort Faroth, a very easy way of reaching it, is by using the teleporter right here to the northeast of the third church of America, which then teleports you to the bestial sanctum, and then you just have to ride your horse all the way until you reach Fort Faroth. So from Fort Faroth's entrance, you really just have to sprint straight ahead. Then climb the ladder here to the top and open the chest for the right half of the Dactus Medallion, as simple as that. Now that we are at the Altos Plateau, we can finally get our very powerful claws. First, let's go with the Raptor Talons, as you don't have to fight a single enemy to get it. Right after you cross the Grand Lift of Dactus, follow the path to the northwest here, past the Air Tree Gazing Hill Grace, then down until you reach the abandoned Coughing Grace. From there, you'll want to go straight ahead and cross the lake, then proceed just a little bit northeast where I have the blue marker set, past all of the lake flowers then pass the trees here, and you'll soon reach the Sage's Cave. There are a lot of invisible walls here, but don't worry because I'll guide you along the path. The first one is of course right at the entrance. After that, we'll go into the next room past the waterfall and the skeleton, turn over here, hit this other illusory wall. Once again straight ahead, past these chests, you can open them later on if you want some items that you can collect along the way. Just keep going straight ahead. 
eventually reaches room with a little bonfire. Once again, ignore the enemies and go straight ahead. Now this is the chest that you want to open, the one to the left here. For your raptor talent claw. Since we are already here, keep going straight ahead for another nice item. Jump over here, don't forget to jump otherwise you'll fall and die. Then hit this other illusory wall right here. And loot the chest. For the raptor's black feathers, an armor that increases your damage with jump attacks. Now we already have our ultimate weapon, even as early as level 9, the starter Vagabond level. Now let's get into our second amazing class, the Bloodhound class. Getting it requires you to go to Volcano Manor by following the initial steps of Raya the Scout's quest. And the first step is meeting her at Leonia of the Lakes, southeast of the Boil Prawn Shack, right here. Then accept her request to retrieve her necklace, which is right at the Boil Prawn Shack. So buy it from Blackguard here ah. for the price of 1000 runes. Then give it back to Raya. Oh, yeah, thank you, kind. Did I? Then head to the Grand Lift of Dectus and you'll have to go to the top, which requires the two halves of the Dectus medallion. Raya should be now at the top of the Grand Lift of Dectus in the Altus Plateau, but if you cannot find her here, then simply head to the Air Tree Gazing Hill Grace, then head to the Lux Ruins right here, directly close to the Grace, and speak with Raya. I've been waiting for you. I need Take her hand. Give me your I will pray. And she will teleport you right to Volcano Manor. Now speak with Tanif right Ray here. I am Tanith. Join Volcano Manor. This doesn't really have any consequences ending wise. Interesting. Now you get the drawing room key and use it. Go down the hall and open the first door to the right here. And hit the wall with the painting next to the corpse to reveal an illusory wall. So now you want to head to the basement. Go past the main room with the snails here and down the stairs. Past the skate you have to defeat the Blood Knight there. Here's an interesting fact, if you lead the knight back to the door you just came from, he cannot really follow and attack you, so you can use this little area to heal or attack him from range if you prefer, to easily defeat him even early on. An example is through the Bloody Slash ability, defeat the knight for the Bloodhound Claws at last. Now that we have our very powerful claws, we want to focus on increasing their strength even further. For the raptor's talents, what you want to do is find a way of increasing its blood loss potential. And the most effective path is through the Blood Flame Blade incantation. This spell will not only highly increase the blood loss buildup of your claws, and they already have some by default, but also add even fire damage to every single of your hits. Something that will come in handy for a combo that I will explain very soon. To get Blood Flame Blade, simply go from either the Fallen Ruins of the Lake or the Folly on the Lake Grace and then reach the blue marker here, close to the Rose Church, in the Lyernia of the Lakes region of course. Then defeat the Rolling Scarab here for your incantation. Then you want to add the Bloodhound Step, Ash of War to your Raptor Stellan and the King Affinity. If you add an elemental or a magical, even blood or occult affinity, you won't be able to buff it with Blood Flame Blade. In the early game, your Bloodhound's Claw will already have Bloodhound's Step, but after some time you can easily defeat the Knight's Cavalry boss at the bridge to the north of Lens Rise in the Cadid region for the actual Bloodhound Step Ash of War. The second step is upgrading our Bloodhound Claws and the way to do it is through the code affinity. This will add a massive amount of frost build up to your secondary claws, as to easily proc the very nasty frostbite debuff on the enemies, together with bleed all at the same time. And because blood flame blade will add fire damage to our main claw, we can then reset the frostbite, as to constantly keep reapplying it and also bleed for massive amounts of health loss to the enemy. The damage is actually relative to their health, so great for bosses and other enemies with high health. When it comes to adding cold, the earliest and easiest way is most likely to the Horfrost Stomp Ash of War, easily acquired by defeating the invisible Twinking Scarab at this little pond to the right of Caria Manor in Lyernia of the Lakes. The last step is to simply make our claw character extremely tanky, after all, what else is Wolverine known for besides his deadly claws? His sturdy adamantium skeleton 
and regenerative properties of course, all of which you'll get. Please remember that I already have a guide linked to the site here and down below in the video description that explains how to easily tank in the game for all builds, but for this one in particular, the Iron Jar Aromatic is of utmost importance. It does quite literally turn your body into steel by highly increasing all of your physical damage negation at the cost of lower lightning resistance, which isn't that much of a downside against most enemies. It even makes you glow silver. Another very important benefit for any melee character is that it pretty much sets your poise to infinite. What this means is you always poise through attacks no matter your starter poise before applying this effect. This doesn't mean you are immune to staggering, because there are certain attacks in the game that stagger you no matter if your character has high poise, heavy armor or whatever. Against most attacks, however, you'll be able to keep on attacking without being interrupted, which combos well, perfectly with our lightning fast dual clause for unrelenting constant bleed and frostbite proccing on the enemy. The second downside is that it will always make your character fat roll, so roll at the lowest speed, no matter your equipment load. This doesn't matter for this build however, as you can simply use Bloodhound's stab to quickly dodge enemy attacks, and this is better than normal rolling anyways, as far as invisibility frames. The best part is you can find Iron Jar Aromatic or the recipe for it very early in the game. And if you've been following this guide so far, you can already get it. Here's how it goes. You must first reach the Auriza side tomb in the Altus Plateau region. From the capital Rampart Grace, just follow the road here to the northeast. From the side tomb's entrance Grace, keep going straight ahead down the stairs, past the jar enemies here, then turn to your left and go down this window. Then keep on straight ahead, past the doorway with the flower down the other set of stairs. Now you reach this watery area and what you want to do is once again keep going ahead and open the chest at the end. Because the imp enemies can attack you while the chest is teleporting you, I suggest you kill at least the two of them near. Anyways, open the chest and allow it to teleport you. Then simply loot the body ahead of you for the Iron Jar Aromatic Cookbook. Then open the chest again to return to the previous area. To leave the tomb you just have to retrace the steps you took. Crafting the Iron Jar Aromatic is pretty easy besides the living jar shards. But getting them is also not troublesome. There's many spots in the game. But my favorite one comes from the secluded cell at Stormvale Castle. So you just have to keep going north from the Grace. And you'll soon reach this little area with the jar enemies, quite a lot of them. And also a big jar at the back. All of the jars can drop living jar shards. The difference is the big jar has a much bigger chance. Alright, let's talk at last about stat allocation for our claw character. You can easily end this build at around level 100 to 120 if you prefer. I'll give you some stat ranges to suit your playstyle. The first thing you should do is get 14 dexterity, so you can equip all of your claws. After that, 12 faith and 10 arcane for blood flame blade. While most of your damage will come from frostbite and bleed, dexterity is your main damage stat. Our main claw will have the keen upgrade for even higher scaling. You don't really need as high dexterity. I'd say 60 is a good stopping point if you want to stop at a lower level. Otherwise, you can go all out on 70 and even higher if you prefer. Of course, like any tanky character, you want as much vigor as possible. But because of how little damage you take with Iron Jar Aromatic, and the fact you do regenerate hit points, I'd say 50 is a nice stopping point. Otherwise, you can go all out and get at the most 60. As far as faith, you can increase it up to 20 or 25. Remember you can get a plus 5 to all of your stats through Godric's Great Rune, just so you can cast Golden Vow and some other nice faith buffs. For the rest of your points, if you want heavy armor, then I suggest you get around 20 endurance, just so you retain fat rolling as to not get overloaded, but remember you can always use Bloodhound Step to dodge. Now let's cover the best remaining gear slots for our claw character such as armor and talismans. For weapons we already have a King Raptor Talon with Bloodhound Stab and the Code Bloodhound Claws. When it comes to armor, well, 
you can go with any heavy armor of your choice. The bull gold set of course being the strongest. But if you prefer fashion because of how high your damage negation is with Iron Jar Aromatic anyways, there's plenty of other nice looking armor sets that are going to depend on your tastes. Now for the helmet slot, the white mask can also be pretty nice because of the increased attack power when you proc bleed on the enemy, so just keep that in mind. As far as talismans, I really like the Dragon Crest Great Shield to increase our physical damage negation even higher. Besides that, the usual for any bleed build is the Lord of Blood's Exaltation. Because of how fast our claw attacks are, the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia is also a must. And before you can get it, the normal Winged Sword Insignia. As for another neat talisman, the Godskin Swaddling Cloth, because it will regenerate your hit points with successive attacks. And like I said, you attack very fast with your dual claws, for even higher hit points healed. When it comes to consumables, Uplifting Aromatic is also pretty great and it does stack with Iron Jar. And the Pickle Turtle Neck can be nice to increase your stamina recovery, as your dual wielding attacks will be limited by your stamina. Your Wondrous Physic mixed flask effects are also very important, the best one being the Thorny Cracker Tear. This also stack with the Winged Sword Insignia for even higher attack power boost with successive attacks. The other slot can be up to you if you don't want to rely on Pico Turtleneck, you can go for a stronger effect through the Green Burst Crystal tier. If you want hit points regeneration besides spells, the Crimson Burst Crystal tier. The Opaline Heart tier for more damage negation against sources other than physical, which Iron Jar Aromatic does not cover. And there's always the Winged Crystal tier too. Lastly, when it comes to spells, for that nice Wolverine regeneration, you have Blessing Spoon at the mid and late game, but for the early game you can also go with Bestial Vitality, which has very low faith cost. You also have the stats for Rotten Breath for a very nasty Scarlet Rot debuff on the enemy, so you hit them with everything you have, Frostbite Bleed and Scarlet Rot. Alright everyone, so this was it for my Dual Claw Wolverine build guide. If you found it useful, then please remember to like, subscribe and even consider becoming a channel member. Also, please be sure to comment down below other builds you have in mind for me. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.